Hey there! In this video we are looking at changing the period of sine and cosine functions and looking at how changes in the equation and changes in the graph are connected to each other. Now this is part one of two where the period involves pi. It's a fraction or a multiple of pi. In part two we're looking at where the period is a rational number. It doesn't involve pi. Now we're going to experiment with changing the period using one of our basic functions. We're going to use cosine this time and uh, that's that shape that you expect. Starts at the top of a cycle here at uh, 1, goes down all the way to its minimum of negative 1, back up to the top in 2 pi. Its period is 2 pi. Now you may or may not know what happens when you take a function and replace x with some constant times x like cosine of 2x, for example. Let's think about what happens with some of the points here. In our original function, we have, let's say, this point out here at 2 pi 1. Right? You put 2 pi in here, its cosine is 1. Y is 1. Now, we want to think about what point on this new function here corresponds with that point of 2 pi 1. Now, since we're making a change in here with x, we're going to try and think how does the x value have to change in order to get the same y value. We're going to try and track a point that has the same y value here. So this point was 2 pi 1, so we want to think how can we still get a 1 here. If this 2 pi gives us 1, then we need this to be 2 pi because if that blue square, what's in that blue square is 2 pi, its cosine is 1. So if that blue square is 2 pi, it means this has to be pi. If we're going to multiply it by 2, we have to start with something that's half as big. So this new point, where this point is going to go, instead of being at 2 pi 1, it's actually going to be here at pi 1. It's going to be half, the x value is going to be half as big. It seems kind of backwards because it looks like here you're multiplying x by 2, which you are, but it's what ends up happening is the x value needs to be half as big to compensate for that. This point down here, the same thing would be true. This point pi negative 1, in our original function, pi gives us negative 1. So we need this to be pi to give us negative 1, which means this has to be half as big. That has to be pi over 2 because then when we multiply it by 2, we get pi, whose cosine is negative 1. So that point is going to go there. So let's click this, and you can see it visually. Our original function had a period of 2 pi. This new function has been compressed horizontally by a factor of a half, the reciprocal of this. It's been compressed horizontally, so every point is half the distance horizontally from the y-axis here. So if we click on this function, click on our original point there, which that's 2 pi, kind of roughly speaking, I guess. 2 pi 1 is now on our new function here, pi 1. This point down here that was pi negative 1 is now pi over 2 negative 1, just like we predicted it would be. All right, the period is now half as big. The period of our original function was 2 pi. The period of our new function is 2 pi divided by this number here. 2 pi divided by 2 gives you pi. If you, if you see here, the period of this is pi. It does one complete cycle in pi now. It does two complete cycles in 2 pi. This number here is actually, the, this, this number here, we're going to call the b value, because often when people use a variable to represent it, they often use the variable b for that. The b value represents the number of cycles in 2 pi. This value being a 2, there's 2 cycles in 2 pi, instead of 1 cycle for our usual basic cosine graph. Let's try another value here. We're going to try something like, let's go one-third, but I think if I type one-third like that, it's going to be a bit weird, so we're going to put some brackets. When you write this on paper, you don't need to 
write the brackets, but on here, just to make sure it's inside that cosine function, I will put the brackets there. Now, let's think through what happens with this. Let's take a point like this point down here. This one that is on our original function, pi negative one. When you put pi in here, its cosine is negative one. If we still want to get the same y value here, negative one, let's think what we have to put in here. We need this to be pi, so that when we find its cosine, it's negative one. So if that, what's shaded in blue there, is pi, this actually has to be three times bigger. This has to be three pi, because we're gonna multiply it by a third, or in other words, divide it by three. If we're gonna divide it by three, we need this to be three times as big. Again, it's the opposite of what you think. When you put a number smaller than one there, this actually gets bigger. This is one third, so the x value gets three times bigger. We put a three pi in there, divided by three, we get pi, cosine, negative one. That point is actually gonna be three times farther away. Now, it's off the screen, so let's, let's uh, move it over here a little bit so we can see when we look at this. Cosine is symmetric anyways, uh, so it's fine if we just look at one side of it here. So now, our original basic cosine graph, one cycle happens in two pi, and that point that we said there, that pi negative one, that point is now three times as far away from the y-axis, it's now three pi negative one. It's been horizontally expanded by a factor of three, the reciprocal of this. Again, because it does the opposite of what you think, it does the reciprocal, it's three times farther away. Now, you can't even see one whole cycle in that graph, so let's uh, maybe change that axis a little bit there so you can see the top. This still follows what I said earlier, that this number represents the number of cycles in two pi. That b value represents the number of cycles in two pi. Following that logic, this says that there's one third of a cycle in two pi which there is because there's not even a full cycle. There's not even half a cycle. Half a cycle is there, right? Half a cycle is in 3 pi. A whole cycle is in 6 pi. A third of a cycle is in, in 2 pi. It does a third of it. There's one third, there's another third, and there's the last third. Now, talking about this b value, we can actually put a variable b in there, and then we can add a slider, and then see how this changes as we change the value of b. Uh, see the changes in the graph in real time here. Now, as we saw before, when we make this a number smaller than one, that period gets longer, right? When we make this 0 0.5, that period instead of being two pi is now four pi. It's twice as big. And when we make this a number bigger than one, the period gets shorter. When we make it two there, now, let me stretch this out a little bit so we can see it a bit better. When we make that a two, instead of being the period being two pi, it's now pi, half as much. And something else that's maybe worth noticing here is, this would be no different if we had sine here. So if that was sine, and this was sine, the only difference would be where it starts in terms of the up and down cycle of the thing. Sine starts in the middle on the way up, but the same fact that the period changes according to that b value, exactly the same way as it did before. Sine x, the period's two pi. Now with that b value being two, the period is half as much pi, been horizontally compressed. Now with this slider, we looked at values bigger than one, smaller than one, but we only looked at positive numbers. What you could actually do is look at negative numbers. Now I'm gonna move this over a little bit and we can see what happens. You don't do this very often with the b value, put a negative in there, but you could. And what would actually happen is you would get a, a reflection here as well. You get a horizontal reflection because if that b value is negative there, so if this is b value of negative one, you need to put the opposite sine x value to get the same y values. If you're gonna multiply by negative one first, multiplying by negative one basically changes the sign. So you have to start with the x values that are opposite sign. So this point that was right there, pi over two, one, is gonna be negative pi over two, one. And then this point down here that was negative pi over two, negative one, now becomes 
positive pi over 2, negative 1. It's a horizontal reflection. Now, the reason you don't very often do that is because for the, 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 the way the symmetry and the patterns are in these functions, it's the same as a vertical reflection. So more often people write equations where there's been a vertical reflection instead of a horizontal reflection. But the main thing to see so far is how changing the B value in the equation causes changes in the period and the graph. Now let's summarize this and use it in a few examples. All right, so what we have when we change sine x or cos x to sine bx or cos bx is we have a horizontal compression when the absolute value of b is bigger than 1 and a horizontal expansion when the absolute value of b is less than 1. And it's by a factor of 1 over b. It does the opposite of what you expect. Big number makes it compressed, smaller period. Small number makes it expanded, bigger period. What we also get is a horizontal reflection if b happens to be negative, less than 0. But that's not something that you see or do very often. Now, in general, to figure out the period from the b value, you need to know that the period is 2 pi divided by the b value. Or if you want to write it as a formula, you can. Period equals 2 pi over b, and then you can use that to determine the period, or the b value for that matter. The b value also represents the number of cycles in 2 pi for a sine or cosine function. Now we're going to graph a couple of functions here. This first one has a b value of 3, so the period is 2 pi divided by 3. Now if we're going to map that out on here, we know it's a sine curve, so it's going to start at 0, and then we just want to figure where 2 pi over 3 is. That's pi, and 2 pi over 3 is 2 thirds of that, 2 thirds of pi, so that's where it's going to be at 0 again and then halfway in between those two points it's at zero and halfway in between the first two it's at the top and halfway in between the second two it's at the bottom and then we can just continue that pattern and map out a bunch of other key points and into the negatives and then try and draw a curve through all of those points to create the graph of y equals sine 3x now the second one here the b value is 0.5 so we can figure out the period a couple different ways. First of all, we can just think of it as a horizontal expansion by 2, so that the period is twice as big at 4 pi as what it would normally be at 2 pi. Or we can do the period's 2 pi divided by the v value. 2 pi divided by 0.5 is the same as 2 pi times 2. Dividing by a half is like multiplying by 2, so we get a period of 4 pi there. So it's a sine curve, so it starts at 0. And we know the period's 4 pi, so that much later it's at 0 again. And then halfway in between those two points, it's at 0. Halfway in between the first two, it's at the top. Halfway in between the second two, it's at the bottom. And then into the negatives, we can continue that pattern the same way. And then draw a curve through those points to create the graph of sine point 0.5x. We're going to do one more here. This is a cosine curve with a few different transformations that have happened to it. First of all, the b value is 2, so the period is 2 pi over 2, or pi. It's been horizontally compressed. The fact that the a value there in front is 3 means the amplitude's 3, the maximum's 3, and the minimum's negative 3. The domain is all real numbers and the range is y is greater than or equal to negative 3 and y is less than or equal to 3. And the fact that there's that negative there, we're going to make a note here that there's also a vertical reflection when we go to draw this thing. So we'll put some lines for the max and min, and then this is a cosine curve. Normally you'd have a point, it's starting at the top, but it's going to have to be reflected because we have a vertical reflection here. So we're going to put the starting point at the bottom for negative cosine, the period being pi, so if we go pi later it's going to be at the bottom again and again and again and then into the other side and the negatives as well. And halfway in between each of those points it's going to be at the top, so we can put a point at the top there. It's going to be at a maximum point in between each of those and one more over there. And now the grid is not the greatest for this, but halfway in between each of those it's going to be in the middle, so I'm going to have to go halfway in between uh, a space there, 
and continue these points over here. Try not to miss. And we'll do one more right there. And then we're going to draw a curve through that to create that graph of minus 3 cos 2x. All right, so that is part one of period changes in sine and cosine functions.